Hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Dungeons & Dragons Horror Stories. In today's episode, we have a tale of a dungeon master that almost destroys a campaign, only to learn a good lesson. And another DM that is just downright bad. But first, this chart shows that a lot of you watching are not yet subscribed. So here are some kitties to help convince you to. Ah, there we go. I hope that was enough to get you to subscribe. If not, hopefully the stories will. So, let's get into them. I, female 18, played an incomprehensibly bad D&D game recently, and I can't stop thinking about it. By a Reddit user, Worst Game Throwaway. This is a throwaway, just in case. A friend of mine had invited me to join a random one-shot of some D&D 5e. Someone in his server was hosting a few of our mutual friends, who would be playing for the first time, and I thought, why not? Couldn't be too bad. Oh, how naive I was. The DM was running a Tokyo-esque cyberpunk setting, which was fairly exciting at first, and he also claimed to be a rather experienced DM, which enticed me into the game further. The issue started early, with the DM's odd arrogance and adamancy that the one-shot would turn into a full campaign, saying things like, All my previous one-shots have turned into campaigns, in a cocky manner. It was a bit off-putting right off the bat. He was also adamant that we have a healer, because apparently only one NPC in the entire setting sold healing potions or something of the sort. That was a bit weird as well. He also told us how we were going to go from level 2 to level 3, mid one shot, which I found quite odd. He continued to forewarn us how we'd only level up if we interacted in a certain way with a certain NPC, and if some of us didn't, we'd be behind a level. Big spoiler here, we never fucking met this NPC, nor did we make it to level 3. Now, I found this pretty odd especially considering the fact that there were three new players at this table, and that everyone gaining their subclasses and leveling up in the middle of a one-shot might be kind of strange for said new players. I mentioned to one of the new players that leveling up mid-game is kind of weird, and to not stress about it when it comes up, to which the DM became incredibly defensive and went on to tell me how I shouldn't hyper create a vision, and that he asked many experienced DMs about it. The DM also allowed one of the players to play over text the entire game, and he didn't read out the text or anything himself, and he would play sound effects for their character. It was really awkward once we actually got into the game. One last issue before the game is that DM demanded that we use dice on D&D Beyond. I explained to the DM that on my laptop, D&D Beyond dice are super choppy and take up to 30 seconds to actually roll, to which the DM just told me to roll your dice before your turn in combat. When I explained to him how fucking stupid that is and spent a solid 5 minutes arguing about it, he luckily added a dice spot to the server we were playing in. My friend who invited me had already dipped from all the red flags, but still wanted to listen in. I only stayed to try and help the new players have a slightly better experience, and to witness whatever the fuck this game would turn out to be like. Oh boy, did it turn out to be something special. Finally, we began the game, and something immediately struck me. Oh my fucking god, he's playing Vocaloid during the game. He played Vocaloid, and later Japanese rap, throughout the entire fucking one-shot. Not even instrumentals. Not even like hand-picked tracks at least. Like, his fucking playlist of Vocaloid music was playing throughout the entire game. To say it was distracting is putting it mildly. Okay, after I got over the whiplash of the Vocaloid, our party met with a character who would hire us to do a job. The guy wanted us to go investigate some murders in the city for pay. Okay, okay, cool. This might be okay. The new players began role-playing their asses off immediately. It was a really cool sight, honestly, as they tried to haggle this guy for a mild increase in pay, to which the character and DM shut down to an insane degree. 
no reciprocation of the new player's really fun roleplay, no persuasion rules, and he even began threatening the party that if we kept trying to roleplay, we basically wouldn't even get the quest, and that the game would end. So, we reluctantly all set out to do the quest. This is also where it became apparent that the DM did not help out any of the three new players make their sheets, or teach them anything about D&D or the mechanics. After leaving the worst roleplay experience ever, we left the guy's HQ. One of the new players asked the DM to recount some of what the guy told us before we head out to do his job, and what the DM said next flabbergasted me into next week, and might have given me a fucking concussion. The DM asked, Roll me a history check. I was flabbergasted, bamboozled, bewildered, befuddled. The DM wanted a history check to recall what the NPC had just said to us 0.5 nanoseconds ago. I didn't mention anything, but I was in a state of complete and utter shock. Don't forget the Vocaloid is still playing. Luckily, the players succeeded their check, who fucking knows if we could have gotten to play if they failed and we started searching for information in the area. We made our way into another part of the city, where the DM randomly decided to bring up the red light district in the area, which was apparently right next to the school. He also thought it was necessary to mention the strange noises and grunts coming from an alley, which weirded me the fuck out, personally. We started asking questions of a pleasantly offensive, drug addict stereotype who was just as great as you'd think he is. At this point, we started noticing that basically every NPC would react to us in the exact same way, being weirded out by the party and acting super abrasive. Every single NPC acted the exact same fucking way, and it kind of got exhausting. After nearly two hours of absolute nothing, meandering, trying to find information on the murders from cookie-cutter weirded-out NPCs, we finally found an NPC who proceeded to describe, and I shit you not, the exact words used were, a hauntingly beautiful fourth grader, around the area. Dude, what the f- That description, and the way it was said, had the whole table weird champing the fuck out. And don't forget, Vocaloid was underscoring that description. Anyway, this info led us to a boarding school, trying to find the hauntingly beautiful fourth grader, the DM kept making non-stop pedo jokes about our characters and shit while we were investigating, which was really uncomfortable for all of us. At this time, the Vocaloid playlist ran out, so one of the new players had to start playing music to fill the dead air. Luckily, it was OSTs for scenes and not Miku. No offense to the Queen Miku. We finally found the fourth grader who was possessed, or something like that, and three hours into the one-shot, we had our first combat. Finally, I was so happy to at least have something that wasn't shitty roleplay or pedo jokes. Unfortunately for us, the combat didn't even last one round. The yokai and the hauntingly beautiful fourth grader, herself, decided to skedaddle, and the combat ended. Okay, we guessed that we had to follow it. We did only to find ourselves in a hallway puzzle with seven doors, which were magic proof, so we couldn't try to do anything clever with the puzzle. At this point, we were going overtime of where we were supposed to, but luckily for us, the DM could keep going. Extra lucky for us is that one of the new players decided to straight out lie to get us out of the one shot, and they said they had to go. Thank you, thank you God. The DM asked us when we can all come back for another game, and we all awkwardly said that we weren't interested in another one, and left. The poor new players said they did not end up having a good time, and holy fuck, neither did I. I'm going to be honest, I don't believe this guy was a very experienced DM at all. This is only a peek behind the curtain of the absolute fucking boredom and misery we experienced playing this game. Let this be a warning to all ye players. Beware any DM who likes to talk about hauntingly beautiful 4th graders. Edit. And I completely forgot as well. Before the game, he entirely banned multiclassing, and said that, even at level 2, if you took two classes, the monster would have to be twice as tough. That also bewildered the fuck out of me.
Yeah, I agree with OP that this dude definitely in no way was any sort of expert at DMing. From telling OP to just roll before her turn since the D&D Beyond dice were laggy, to leveling up in the middle of a one-shot, which, in all honesty, that could work, but only if each player had a level up pre-planned. But like OP said, there were newbies in this game. Then there was the playing of music with lyrics the entire game, which can be super distracting. But to top it all off, bringing in a child character and describing it the way he did was super fucking creepy. And then he had the gall of making pedo jokes at the party's expense for following the character, even though that was the only way to move the story along. I don't blame any of the players for leaving and not coming back. Though, hopefully, one of the players told this DM how shit he was. That way, in some far off universe, this DM can change his ways. Though, you won't catch me holding my breath. And before we get into the final story, if you're enjoying the video, I ask that you please click the like button, as it does a lot to help the channel out. If not for me, then do it for Nipsey. I really hope you like the video. I like people who like videos. Me too, Nipsey. Me too. Now, let's get into the final story. Players burn the body of a dead character to stop him from being resurrected. By Reddit user, Drakian. So, last week, I failed as a dungeon master. Two weeks ago, in session 5 of our campaign, a party member, Ranger, died to some mechanical birds in a dungeon, and we ended the session with everyone leaving the dungeon, having saved the body. We pick up the next week, playing on a different day from the usual, because one player couldn't make our usual day. The only person who couldn't make that day was the ranger, who was dead. So I said, alright, we'll play on this day, and you folks can try to find a way to resurrect the ranger. We play the session, and the opening combat goes fine. I haven't had much time to prep this campaign at all, and specifically, this session, but it was alright. I have ideas in place, I just have trouble of thinking of how to get from A to B. After the combat, the party goes to head back to camp, and before this next part, I have to mention that at some point during the session, the paladin randomly decided to go on a short tangent about how he really doesn't like the ranger or his character. I and everyone else mostly brushed it off, but after a few of us were thinking, what the fuck, that wasn't okay, along with a few other things. He had also started this tangent with, Guys, don't tell Ranger, or do tell him, I don't really care. And this is on the fucking recording. Everyone consented to having our sessions recorded and privately uploaded in Session Zero. Now, as the party is heading back to camp, the Paladin says, You know guys, Ranger didn't really do much for us, just want to dump his body somewhere? And no one really argued, and I thought it was just a joke. When the party gets back to camp, the human fighter decided to take the ranger's body and throw potatoes into a fire before setting the corpse near it and praying to their chaotic evil famine god to resurrect him. After that didn't work, the elf fighter suggested, as a joke, that it didn't work because they didn't put ranger into the fire. Human fighter then decided to do that. I was so surprised that I didn't know what to do or think that I could just say no so I made them roll a strength check to move the body. They failed, but then they decided to just get a torch out and start lighting the body like that. I expected that they would realize that it wasn't working and stop, but I was oh so stupid and wrong. The elf fighter even did a bunch of math for how long the corpse could survive on the fire. And I failed as a dungeon master by letting these idiots just continue to burn the corpse. Like, it's obvious it wasn't going to work but they just burned the body. I even directly gave them the chance to do a quest for some magic nobles to get the ranger resurrected, and the paladin said, Nah, those guys are assholes. Let's not do anything for them. After that, I made the human fighter tell the ranger they burned his body, and he hasn't said anything to them, but he is fucking pissed and legit wants to just kill all their characters. I let him get resurrected by those magic nobles, but there was even talk of him coming back as a revenant who swore revenge on the party. And, by the way, during all of this, the warlock did literally nothing. I failed as a dungeon master, 
and honestly, I think this campaign is going to explode because of it. At least it's not as bad as our last campaign, though. TLDR. We had a party of Ranger, Paladin, Warlock, Human Fighter, Elf Fighter, and a Ranger who died. Paladin goes on a rant about how he doesn't like the Ranger or his character. Human Fighter burns Ranger's corpse, knowing full well destroying it would prevent resurrection, and a fake, non-magical resurrection ritual with potatoes. Ranger is pissed and wants to murder the whole party now. I also want to add that I'm going to have a chat with everyone tomorrow, and I'll update this post with how it goes. Edit. Instead of discussing everything all at once tomorrow, I'm starting with private discussions with each party member before we do a group discussion afterwards. I of course spoke with Ranger first, then I spoke with Human Fighter. To sum up, Human Fighter believes his character would do that in character, and out of character, he did it because it was funny, his own words. I asked him how he would feel if someone did this to his character, and he replied that he would not care. When I opened this discussion saying that I needed to talk to him about D&D, he said, You still salty about me burning the body? He seemed to agree not to do any more PvP, but I'll be watching, and if things go badly with the rest of the group, I'll cancel the campaign. And in terms of our ranger and paladin assholes, I was not aware of any issues that anyone was having with them currently, though I do know that during character creation, Elf Fighter was getting annoyed at Paladin for constantly asking to link up backstories. The only other issue there would be is that I wasn't fully ready to start this campaign yet when we started it, but I decided to begin underprepared because Warlock really wanted the campaign to start, and because I really wanted to play D&D again, especially after our previous campaign was tainted further. Edit 2. Spoke with the party, and there is one big key detail that was missed with Paladin. He thought Human Fighter was a cleric, attempting to use Divine Intervention. He thought it could actually work. Human Fighter always talks about their Potato God and has not used any specific fighter abilities, leading Paladin to believe that Human Fighter was a cleric. Additionally, looking back on the recording, his rant wasn't as bad as a member of the party was making it sound, and though it was still out of pocket to say that, his reasoning was because Ranger was playing more of a lone wolf character and he doesn't actually have any issues with Ranger. So Ranger is going to try and be less of a lone wolf, and Paladin's going to be better about dead players. Additionally, we had a group chat about members of the party being passive, and the party is going to stop splitting up for no reason. The reason Warlock didn't do anything is because he didn't leave the wagon and assumed everyone had gone off to a different area, and Elf Fighter didn't do anything because they haven't been in the group as long, and didn't think that they had the right to try and stop someone else from doing something. So we made sure that they know that they are a full member of the party, just like everyone else, and if someone in the party is doing something fucked up, they can speak or act to stop them. Edit 3. This should be the final edit. The session went well, the party stayed together, and Ranger has forgiven the party in and out of character. The real idiots here were just me and Human Fighter. But we've had a talk, and things should be alright for the future now that we've reconciled all of our issues in the party. PvP is now fully banned without consent, and the party is staying together instead of splitting up at dungeons. Glad things had a happy ending, though I am still going to be watching Human Fighter. Well, that story was certainly a roller coaster. That story, with all the edits, goes to show that communication is super important in a game like Dungeons & Dragons, especially when it comes to player conflict and resolution. I'm glad to hear that everyone was able to talk, figure out the misunderstandings, and that things worked out. Hopefully, things stay good for the group moving forward. If you have a story that you would like to be shared, be sure to post it to the D&D Doe subreddit, or even feel free to contact me on Twitter. As always, I appreciate all of you, and may all of your roles be natural 20s. Until next time.